Hi, my name is Melin Pathak and I am a solutions architect on the SAP team here at AWS. Today in this short 10 minutes video, I'm going to show you how you can use AWS Launch Wizard to deploy SAP HANA and NetWeaver servers on AWS in about one to two hours. AWS Launch Wizard offers a guided experience for sizing, configuring, and deploying AWS resources for SAP HANA and HANA-based NetWeaver workloads in alignment with AWS and SAP best practices. Start by reading the Launch Wizard documentation. This will show you the options for deployment patterns, including a central system, distributed system, and high availability. This will allow you to understand how to provide inputs during the deployment. Launch Wizard will ask you questions about your configuration and reading this documentation helps you answer them to create the most optimal environment. Make sure your SAP HANA installation software has been uploaded to an S3 bucket within the account where you want to install HANA. Now log into your AWS Management Console and select AWS Launch Wizard. On this page, you will want to select the SAP tab under the deployment section. From here, you can create new deployments. The first step is to choose an application, click on SAP, and then select Next. Then in this second step, you will define infrastructure. You can provide inputs like deployment name, descriptions, and tags that will be assigned to all of the resources that are created by AWS Launch Wizard. Provide all the needed infrastructure details. You are creating a new configuration, so provide a new configuration name whether it's a production or a non-production deployment. Choose an EC2 key pair and other infrastructure details like the VPC, subnets, and availability zones. Your SAP servers will be deployed in these subnets and VPC. You'll need to verify outbound connectivity so it can download the patches from the internet. You can create new security groups or choose from existing security groups for both application servers and database servers. Then if you want, you can add a proxy server detail. Then you'll want to choose a time zone, whether you want EBS encryption or not, and the domain name for the SAP servers. You can input an SAP Sys group ID, and you can also provide an SNS topic if you want to receive notifications about the deployment. This configuration is saved for future use. Now move to step three, configure application settings. For this demo, I am going to deploy a SAP NetWeaver stack, but you can also deploy just HANA. Here you will input general SAP system settings, such as system ID, system admin user ID, volume types, whether you want to use GP2 or IO1, and if this system is a transport domain controller. The next section is the HANA general settings, like the HANA system ID, instance number, and again, EBS volume type, GP2 or IO1. Here you can choose to install HANA software. If you don't choose to do that, it will just create the servers. But if you do choose to install it, then you will have to upload HANA media in an S3 bucket, and the name of the bucket should start with launch wizard. Next, input the HANA password. If you want, you can also install backend agent for SAP HANA. If you select to install the backend agent, you will have to provide additional inputs related to this installation. This takes us to the fourth step, configure deployment model for SAP NetWeaver. Here you can choose deployment details, pick between single instance, distributed instance, or high availability. Moving along, you will input details about the application and database servers. What kind of AMI do you want to choose? Do you want to bring your own license or do you want to use a license included AMI from AWS Marketplace? Pick a host name for installation, whether you want to enable EC2 auto recovery or not, along with EC2 instance type. You'll also be able to review the monthly estimated cost for the service with an on-demand pricing model. Moving on, you will want to supply similar settings for database servers. So the AMI ID, whether you want HANA scale up or scale out deployment, the HANA server host name, the instance type, again, whether you want to enable EC2 auto recovery or not. You can choose the number of additional application servers and the naming convention for the hosts. 
again the instance type and whether you want to enable EC2 auto recovery or not. And then click next. Here you can review all the parameters that you have inputted to ensure they are all correct before you begin the deployment. Once you have completed your review, go ahead and click on deploy. Now under the SAP tab for deployments, you will see your deployment is in progress. It can take up to two hours for this to complete, but there is no manual intervention required at this point. Once the deployment is complete, you will get a message in the console. This took less than two hours for the deployment to complete. Then you can go to the EC2 console and check the instances. You can see the servers that have been deployed. Launch Wizard also installs Systems Manager Agent, so you can connect to these servers using AWS console using Sessions Manager. You can see here that you are connected to the HANA database. SAP HANA is installed and HANA processes are running. Now you can also review the logs to ensure that the resources are being provisioned and deployed properly. You can also see all the systems that have been created and how Wizard configures all the best practices as provided by SAP in the SAP nodes specific to the operating system. Now you can create one more new deployment. Going through the deployment process again, this shows how you can reuse the saved configuration from the previous deployment, ultimately saving you time. And that's how you deploy SAP HANA using AWS Launch Wizard. Thank you for watching.